nature of winning football games means there's only bigger games up ahead, and, and this week is certainly uh, no different. That's the quarterback of your playoff-bound Washington Redskins. It's time for the Redskins Report with Trevor Maddich, brought to you by Fork Union Academy. Uh, Trevor Maddich on the line. Good morning to you, Trevor. Good morning, Brian. Well, listen, i got to tell you, I like what I'm seeing out of this Redskin team. I mean, Kirk Cousins gets out there, and then the first half, you know, he was taken out uh, for the second half, but uh, most of the first half, he was dominant. He looked really good. Now, it was against the Cowboys, but I think this team is peaking at the right time. What say you? Uh, you're right about that. I mean, a lot of times what happens is the, the team that's healthiest and hottest with the hottest quarterback is the team with the momentum going into the playoffs. And we've seen that happen before with the Giants a few years ago. I think they were 9-7, and seven, ended up winning the Super Bowl. You had a Cardinals team a few years ago that struggled early and came on strong, ended up in the Super Bowl. And so I'm not saying the Redskins are going to the Super Bowl, but, but you're right. I mean, they are peaking, and the most important component, the quarterback, is is peaking in a major way, and when you keep in mind that that Cousins has got one of the better groups of receivers in the NFL in terms of Deshaun Jackson who can go deep and Pierre Garcon who can go over the middle and tight end Jordan Reed that nobody can cover and then some young guys that can cause trouble. If the quarterback's hot, then there are options out there that that can cover up a lot of other problems. Uh, yeah, I mean, can I just ask one other thing? I mean, I mean, you talk about Kirk Cousins right now, four thousand one hundred and sixty-six yards. That's a franchise record. Yeah, that it's just incredible, and he very, very, very nearly uh, set other records and other things. I mean, he's just uh, he set I think the overall touchdown records for the franchise for a season. He was within just a couple of touchdown it's passes. It's thirty-one, and he's at twenty-nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah and so he's. Uh, you know, he, he, he's done a lot of, of fantastic things. Now, keep this in mind, too, though. This is his first year as a full-time starter ever. It's his second year ever in this system, I believe it is. And uh, more than that, with the injuries on the offensive line and the tight end, the running game has not been very good. As a matter of fact, it's been fairly anemic, and he's still been able to carry this team by using short passes in lieu of the running game and defenses couldn't stop it anyhow. Yeah, and and you mentioned Jordan Reed. By the way, he passed Chris Cooley yesterday for the most receptions by a tight end as well. And he definitely that combination, Cousins to Reed, could loom large in the playoffs. Can I? I and listen, I am excited about the Redskins. And let's face it, they've done more than anybody ever predicted. No one predicted this. However. Uh, how important is it to point out that none of their wins, those nine wins, all came against uh, losing records? Or no one with a winning record, I should say. The one team that didn't have a losing record was Buffalo. They finished at 500, 8-8, eight and eight, but every other win was against a losing team. Yep, Larry, you're right about that. And the Redskins really had a schedule that, that fell in their favor. I mean, early on, the Redskins struggled on the road, but they won at home. Well, part of the reason was that they played the Panthers and the Patriots and, and the Falcons, who were hot at the time, on the road. And at home, they had much more winnable games. And so it really shook out in a way that the Redskins got to put it in first gear and get some traction. Now, I don't, I don't begrudge the Redskins that. Just to say that early on, the Redskins were also one of those teams that had been struggling and hadn't proven a darn thing. And the fact that the schedule shook out in a way that allowed them a little bit of space to come together helps them. But the fact is, right now, they have come together. And when you look at the team on tape, you wouldn't think that this team could only beat the bad teams. Hmm. You look at them on tape, and you'd see that they'd have a chance against most teams. All right, so well, let's move forward and look at toward the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, forget about most teams. How yeah. about just that one yeah, team? That one team is the one we got to think about next. Uh, what do you think the chances are against Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers? You know, the Aaron Rodgers is the wild card here because he is a Super Bowl champion quarterback, and he can get hot at any time. Keep in mind that, that what he does, nobody else in the league can really do, and that is see an open receiver and have such a quick release and such a, a lightning-strong arm that he can drill a laser in there and complete passes all over the field. Often you'll have a quarterback see a receiver a little late, and if he throws it to him then a little bit late, it'll end up being an interception because those windows close too fast. Rodgers can do it. Now, the fact that the, his receivers are messed up in terms of injury and stuff, Jordy Nelson, his best receiver, is out. The offensive line is banged up, and they're not very good. They don't run the ball well. Then the offense is struggling as a whole, even with Rodgers. 
is what should give the Redskins you know, hope. Or excuse me, the Redskins fans anyway, the players, you know, they it's a different issue with them. But the 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 scary thing is if Rodgers gets hot, then whoever the receivers are are gonna have footballs right between the numbers all over the field. So what you've got to hope is that the pass rush can get there so that he, he doesn't have time to settle in and find a rhythm with the guys that he does have. You're going into last night's game between the Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. There were a lot of questions as to who the Redskins would face in this first round matchup. Uh, the options were the Vikings, the Packers, or the Seattle Seahawks. Do you think the Packers are the best of those three choices? And, and best meaning the best matchup for the Redskins? I, I thought the Vikings were the better matchup, even though the Vikings' defense is a lot better than, than Green Bay's. Uh, a lot. The they've got a quarterback who's a young guy in Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, Seattle's got a Super Bowl winning quarterback in Russell Wilson. So I always thought it's better in the in the playoffs to get that young quarterback, right? Although the Redskins have the same kind of thing, but but Cousins is playing on a different level right now. The uh, but for Redskins fans, one good thing about facing Aaron Rodgers in case he does get hot is that the other side of the ball for them, the defense, has really struggled for most of the year, especially in covering the pass. And so this, you know, if, if you're the Redskins, you're thinking we better be ready to win a shootout, and then hopefully Rodgers won't get hot in this game. Hmm. Uh, all right, so uh, that's looking real good. Let me let me just ask you, what is different this year compared to past year? What was the difference? Why did this team start to blossom? There are two reasons. One of them is the change in culture, where this team, whenever it got down, it never stayed down. I mean, you look at. They were two and four early in the season. Yep. Got down twenty-four nothing at home to Tampa Bay with the Patriots coming up next. You know they were looking at two and six, right? But down twenty-four nothing, they looked at each other in the eye on the sideline and refused to lay down. And they came back and won that game, and that really set the tone for the season. Mm. The other thing is the development of Kirk Cousins. I mean, the thing is, I figured that this year especially. The best that we could hope for from Cousins was that he would be a competent game manager, but he wouldn't be able to carry the team. Well, what's happened is he's become a, uh, an outstanding game mm. manager this year. How about that? And he has carried the team because the running game disappeared. And it's all been Cousins. And it's not just been those short passes. He's also thrown that ball vertically down the field on the deep strikes and accurately and consistently accurately. So Cousins is already way ahead of where certainly I expected that he would be. All right. Well, we're going to leave it right there. Uh, thank you very much. We'll talk to you again on Friday in advance of the game.